Hello everyone. So we are here again to talk a, a little bit about the software development. And this time we are going to be talking about uh, how we are structuring our software incorrectly. And uh, this video will be a follow up on an article that I wrote recently talking about how we are doing, how, how developer, most of the developers are structuring or designing the, the code based on the on based on the package per uh, type. So basically most of the developer when they are structuring the code, they are structuring something like this, separating thing, uh, the code, uh, the, the packages by type, right? Uh, con putting controllers, entities, exception, repository, and services um, separately instead of being uh, structuring the code based on the logical domain. And here I'm using this example because five years ago I was doing the same way. And why most of the developers does that up to today, why I was doing that in the past, it is because this is how the internet it's been uh, teaching us to do, right? So every, or most of the tutorial on the internet, especially when you are learning a new framework, they are gonna be structuring the code like this. However, when you are working on big systems and complex system with different, many developer work at the same time, you should be um, making sure our domain knowledge, it is a uh, well bounded, right? And this way not having our, the, 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 let's say the domain knowledge be leaking across uh, different packages. And another thing uh, that we, when you, when we structure the code in this way, we are breaking a very important rule which is that says that about co cohesion versus coupling, right? So basically, as I mentioned here, if you are a developer system in which you have a model called product and you have, let's say, product uh, entity, product service, product repository, uh, they are highly coupled and when one change, the other will be changed as well. So the that raises a big question why you are not grouping those together right and um, so in the other example here we have um, we get instead we are uh, let's say organizing the code uh, on the on, on the package per type that will be having like something like this product repository basket repository but they don't have anything in common so and the question comes again say why you are um, grouping them together if there is nothing to do with each other just uh, this because the type right and um, this uh, leads for a big uh, uh, mud right and this is, brings a lot of coupling and here you can see very clear what I was talking about when you are not separating your code by domain logic specific you are adding a lot of, uh, let's say, interconnection between uh, packages or let's say domains. And we don't have clearly boundaries being being drawn and consequently it will, um, um, maintenance for this code will be much higher and uh, much more difficult. And the same way to onboard new people, new developers to the project, you would have to know, uh, know more than one uh, domain uh instead of instead of being focused on the domain there this developer will be uh, first working on so here one example when you don't have this boundary well done and um, the other side we have uh, the example when you have this well um designing and things well bounded uh, on the right context and the knowledge being kept um on the being kept on, on inside the, the package itself. And here you see that the, the interaction between between packages is very clear and consequently very easy to, to identify the domain. And this way you will know uh, where to find everything that you need for that specific domain logic. At the end of the article, I point here to one uh, project example where we are put in place what we had discussed on the article. And basically one important thing that we, we discussed on the article is that your uh, diagram should be reflected on your code. And here on this project, which it is a trading system, 
uh, we have uh, three main models which is feed where it comes the signal to buy or sell and the price per second and then you have another model is called forex with a bunch of other uh, components and then we have a runner which will be exposing the let's say the stats of the the, the system that's being uh, running uh, when we look at the code itself we can see that we can immediately uh, map what is on the um, diagram to our system so we have three uh, models here the feed the forex the runner and you have a common one here which will be uh, used across the the tree and then when you look at inside the project the model itself we can also map uh, a component price and signal as we have here and uh, we can see that inside the domain this right but you can also see that you have the api uh, component here which it is which it is help us to enforce this boundary right because um, as we uh, spoke on the cohesion, cohesion and coupling side, we want to be have one single um, entry to that model, right? And in Java, we have these new uh, models in which we export what can be accessed from other models. So, for example, this feed model is being used in the Forex and but through forex the only um, component that will access it is what it's public let's say what is exported right and looking at the forex like, we can also see the same structure we have the api uh, with everything that will be public to be accessed outside of this model and then on the domain part we have everything mapping to what we had on our um, diagram here right and uh, important to look that every component would contain one public interface which it is the entry point to that um we can call entry point for the package or to the that uh, lo domain lodge or you can also say that it would be mapping containing the um, functional methods for that component so everything would be accessed through this interface and the same way you can see in the order as well which will contain one public uh, interface which will be uh, accessed uh, from other component you can see that we have one more uh, interface here on this model however you can see that this um, interface is local interface only so when you see the open locker, it's a public interface. When you flout uh, the, the locker, it means it's a local interface only. So it's only accessed from the inside the package. This way we are prote protecting everything here uh, from the, the package to be accessed only from inside and exporting or making public only the public um, interface or uh, let's say DTO objects or factory. So let's talk a little bit more about factory. Uh, and I think a good example would be a factory from broker uh, integration. So factory, it is responsible for um, orchestrate everything that you component uh, requires, right? And uh, in this example here, uh, we have a factory that it will be creating the right um, service instance for our interface based on one parameter. And another example that you can use would be portfolio as well and see all this, uh, all this object in class that you have on, inside this uh, component. And you need to uh, uh, document how this should be instantiated the, the service for our interface. And if you see here, uh, we require uh, some dependence so in, in order, broken integration and risk management and event notifier and uh, but before we instantiate our main uh, implementation for our, our service we also uh, um, instantiate our portfolio checker which is a, a object from inside our component so that means uh, it's only part of this component and let's see how we call different uh, uh, factors for different components and how they um, all uh, work together to 
to let's say to to build our system so um, now our portfolio here so we have our main uh let's say a startup would be basically the main uh that's module uh a startup let's say right it's it's called our trading session and when we start and we are calling different uh, factors for for instance it's signal for instance it's broker integration for booking uh, or the book uh, factory and risk and pass different parameters and here for the order and everything work together to build all our um, services right or, or build our uh, components of our system and this probably most of you guys who work with spring and we don't have we you might not be very familiar with factory uh, on this way because uh, spring does that for us with the annotation right but in the end of the day what is happening there you're using a spring factor to build up your uh, your application and to build up your components but um it's very simple don't need spring for those things and uh, actually i think uh, um, spring is a big overhead if you are not using uh much things there if you are only interested on the dependency injection of of spring so that's pretty easy to achieve without spring you just need to uh, uh, structure your code properly and has all those um creator well uh, defined inside the the components and um, you, everything would be working pretty pretty easy and it'll be pretty uh let's say uh, clear what is going on and rather than spring that there's uh, a lot of magic uh, behind the scene um another important concept that i want to touch here it is uh other fact that making this way we structure the code this way you can create meaningful um tests as well the meaningful tests um or oh, i'm also i have a i also have an article about this we can we discourse how to uh, properly write um, unit tests. So the first thing is to understand that unit is not uh, every class or every method for every class, but, in, but instead the unit on this case would be our domain logic. And the, the best way to write um, meaningful and uh, let's say uh, write tests that cover their the logic the functional of the component it is instruction this way and write tests to test your component through the, the interface what i'm trying to say with this is for example let's take order and we have we should you have to follow this part and let's say saying order domain should and this way we will be saying what this uh, order domain should be doing and if you navigate through here to the the tests that we are writing we are testing uh functional uh functional uh let's say uh functions from this domain for example we, the order domain should create order from signal event should uh, taking from what we have named here should create order from closer position should create order from closed position and, and so on and so forth so you'll be writing uh, unit tests to test the comp the whole component itself and be mocking only what it's external to the system uh, so for one example that we we use um i think we mock let me just see here i think we know uh, this should and here for example we are mocking risk management because portfolio uh portfolio package uh, use risk as part of the of the it implementation and uh, we only mock that dependence that outside let's say we only we only mock what it's outside of your component that you're testing and you're checking that it's being called properly um this is it will help in tests as well and another concept the important concept that probably will be seen um, uh, when you are studying about uh, clean architecture it would be the hexagonal 
or ports um, concept, right? And we uh, have applied it here when you are talking about the different models. So for example, when if you look at the our structure, you can see that you have the whole model called feed, but you also have feed as a package inside our local because uh, this is where we are being interacting with the external um, with the external let's say dependence on this case here it's external model but we later could just make this model a microservice for example a microservice and uh, only here you'd be changing the how you'll be consuming that and the rest of the system you'd be you'd, you'd not need any change because the rest of the system is uh, relying on the signal uh, interface rather than the implementation it doesn't matter how the implementation can so to illustrate this let's have just a look here the whole system is depend on this feed uh, service and when you are uh, let's say in, in injecting this dependence we are injecting this uh, trading feed here which will um, let's say wrapping our feed model that it, that it's external to our system this is a, a it's very important concept as well to have when you are uh, depending on the external system uh, and uh, in order to protect your domain from uh, external implementation so i think that's covered everything that i'd like to show you guys so please um go into this this project and I'll put on the description and if from here you're gonna learn a lot of concept and that's a very uh, com uh, let's say complete uh, project with this is um, uh, making we have implemented as well the um, uh, continuous integration with uh, git uh, hub actions and you are performing some some tests look at the coverage look at the maintainability and also generating packaging um for every push that we i send to, to the project so it's a very interesting process and i suggest you guys to have a look and learn from me thank you very much